Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Very glad that you could join us once again. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Jack Pottle. He's Chief Medical Officer of Oxford Medical Simulation, or OMS. OMS is a multi-award winning virtual reality simulation company that's dedicated to optimizing patient care through enhanced healthcare education and VR headsets and OMS software. Welcome to the program, Dr. Pottle. How are you this morning? I am very good, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and thank you for hosting. As co-founder and chief medical officer at Oxford Medical Simulation, give us a bit of background about yourself briefly and then let's talk about Oxford Medical. Absolutely. So I started in educational psychology. I then worked in nursing for two years up in Scotland and I then studied medicine and I've been a doctor, now a physician in acute and emergency medicine in the UK for the last seven years. I've worked abroad in uh, Belize and Thailand and South Africa as well. So I've got a lot of experience in healthcare globally as well. And for me, it was about looking at what we do as doctors, what we do as nurses and the errors that we make. And errors in hospital account for a huge number of deaths. And I was looking at a way of scaling training around that to be able to improve patient care. So that was the uh, that was the start of OMS. And that's a little bit about my background. Now, we hear lots and lots about virtual reality these days or VR simulation. How does OMS incorporate virtual reality in enhancing healthcare? I I agree with you. I think we hear an awful lot about VR and there's a huge amount of hype, most of it, which isn't hugely helpful. So I'll talk to you about the practicalities of what we do in OMS. So as I mentioned, training for doctors and nurses is a huge issue. And the best way we all learn is from experience. And that is what virtual reality can bring. So virtual reality is the use of software to create immersive simulated environments where people can interact as in real life. And the point of that is that it is being able to provide people with a clinical experience on demand. So they're able to do what they would do in real life, be engaged in that emotionally, feel the pressure of being in a situation, having to interact as they would do normally with a patient, but being able to get that experience as and when they want, make mistakes as often as they want in a repeatable, safe environment, and then get very structured feedback based on what they've done, areas for improvement, so that they can go into that virtual scenario again and ultimately improve their performance. And that is what we do as a company. We let people improve performance so they can improve patient care. And virtual reality is the way of scaling that training in an immersive, engaging way. How can virtual reality uh, simulate the thousands and thousands of uh, medical procedures? Are we talking all procedures that are going to be implemented in this, in this software environment? Or are there certain specialized procedures or practices that will be uh, utilized? Yes, good question. And the first thing to say is we very much focus on the more medical and the nursing side. So we are not a surgical simulation company. We focus on clinical decision making, critical thinking and clinical reasoning. That's the areas that we look at. And while looking at that, you can then think, what are the learning experience? What are those simulation scenarios that are generalizable? What are the common and life threatening emergencies that we see in hospital as doctors and nurses? And then how do we build scenarios to test people's skills in them? So it's less about teaching or training people about very specific procedures. It's more about giving them the skills to be able to perform under pressure, make decisions, communicate with the patient, diagnose, treat, work with the provider to be able to then scale that across any environment they may come across. And so in terms of the number of scenarios we've got, we've designed over 100 scenarios now, really across the range of acute care, be it had in the ED or on the med surge floor if you're a nurse, being able to cater to everything in terms of cardiac, respiratory, GI, stroke, all of these scenarios that we commonly see but teaching people in a way that is transferable. So it's not about teaching you absolutely everything you could come across. It's about equipping you with the skills so that you can deal with anything you come across in clinical practice. Now, these skills include some of the uh, the psychological aspects of dealing with uh, difficult patients or patients who may be uh, uh, experiencing dementia? So they do. We very much 
split it into the technical and non-technical skills in terms of what we teach people. So we look at how you speak to the patient, how you make decisions around diagnosis, around what investigations, assessments you do, and how you interpret the results of those investigations and the treatments that you provide, so the technical skills, but more looking at those aspects of the subtleties of communication, of prioritization, of task allocation, and making sure people can do all of those things in a way that allows it to transfer to real life. And we do we do cover things like dementia as well. So we cover ways of managing patients who are who have got delirium or who have got dementia in hospital or who may be agitated with behavioral health problems. So we have libraries of scenarios of managing patients with behavioral health problems as well to be able to cover all those different things that we would normally see in hospital as a physician or as a nurse. Now, OMS presented uh, at the 2019 American College of Emergency Physicians Conference. Uh, were you one of the presenters or the chief presenter at that, that uh, conference? I was. I was. I was over there. So we have offices in London and Boston. So we do a lot of work over in the U.S. And uh, ASAP was in Denver this year. So I was over there presenting OMS um, on stage in terms of uh, the offerings of our scenarios but I was also demoing out there to the emergency physicians because a lot of what we do is focused on the emergency care of patients. And as doctors, whether in the UK or the US, we do not have enough time to be able to train and scale that training. And so actually what we do as an OMS can be very beneficial to those emergency medical physicians to allow them to get repeatable learning when they want to be able to get that learning standardized in a way that is objective and scalable and in a way to make that traceable. So when our learners go through the scenarios, if they're an emergency physician, for example, everything that they will do in that scenario is being logged, is being tagged, is being timestamped. And then they're then able to go back and review their process, uh, review their progress rather in their own time so that actually they can see that improvement over time. And the physicians really appreciate that. They really appreciate the fact that the scenarios look and feel real, the fact that they will improve the physician's behavior and the fact that they can track that progress over time. And that was really what I was presenting over at that conference. Now, there was an actual demonstration of your latest technology. Is that correct? There was indeed. So we were we were there demoing and we demoed all of our scenarios in terms of the uh, 20 medical emergencies library. And we were also there talking about the the multiplayer version of the platform, which is really virtual reality that is interprofessional. So for us, that's where that's where the future of this is going. And that was the um, a soft launch of that. The full launch will be in January of the interprofessional platform. And that is about training not just one individual learner at a time in terms of how to manage a patient, but it's allowing up to six learners to go into that scenario at the same time. They can be anywhere in the world and they can engage in that same clinical scenario with the same virtual patient while talking to each other in that scenario, receiving feedback as a group, and then debriefing on that scenario as well, all in the same virtual environment, though they may be totally distributed around the world. And for me, that is where the future of medical education, medical and nursing training is going. It's allowing people to practice wherever they are in the world, learn from each other, and then be able to build up those non-technical, the soft skills from speaking to each other and receiving feedback as a group. As a training platform, is this accessible to any and all practitioners or are there qualifying uh, credentials that are necessary? Does a, does a physician have to have a certain amount of time in practice in order to be able to use uh, this technology? Not at all, no. So we do uh, libraries of scenarios for students, for junior clinicians and nurses, all the way up to more senior practicing nurses and clinicians. And we do that in training, but we also use these scenarios for assessment and we use them for recruitment as well. So nursing recruitment, the scenarios are being used as lo uh, a lot as well. So there is no upper or lower limit to who can use these for really training scenarios for anyone at all who may be interested in improving their practice. And we sell to institutions, so it's on an institutional license as opposed to individuals coming on and using the platform. So it's very much if an institution is looking to improve their, uh, their clinical performance, this is the kind of solution that they come to to be able to do that. Where can our listeners get some more information about OMS and your uh, technology there? 
So the best way is always our website. That is www.oxfordmedicalsimulation.com. Um, or equally, you can always call us. There are numbers on the site. Or you can email info at oxfordmedicalsimulation.com. And we'd be more than happy to tell you more about it, to come out and see you. And we do free trials as well. So, uh, so institutions can really get a feel of how virtual reality works in practice. It's the kind of thing that is very difficult to have a sense of how it actually works and how you can integrate it and implement it in curriculum until you see it in practice. So we're very happy to come out and see people to do that. Dr. Pottle, Jack Pottle, thank you so much for joining us here on the program this morning. Not at all. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, hello to all of your listeners around the world. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio or copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.